So in this problem, we're given a definite integral and we're asked to approximate it using the trapezoidal method, Simpson's method, and to also find the exact value. And then to compare the three and see um, exactly how far off the, approxima uh, the approximations are from the exact, um, from this exact value. So uh, let's start out using Simpson's rule. Um, now we're using partition with n, or, uh, n sub interval, n equals four, um, points, so the interval from 0 to 4 will be broken up into, um, into um, sub-intervals of length 1. So Simpson's rule says that this integral, which um, I'll just denote star so I don't have to keep writing it over again. Uh, Simpson's rule said this, this is equal to uh, 1 third, uh, right, because if we break this into use 4, sample points, the then delta x is going to equal 1 or the length of the subinterval. Um, so 1 third um, f of 0, of course letting f just equal the integrand. Uh, plus 4 f of 1 plus 2 f of 2 plus uh, 4 uh, f of 3 plus um, f of 4. So this is equal to uh, 1 third, well if we plug in x equals 0 we get the square root of 16 or just 4 plus uh, 4 times you know, the square root of 1 plus 16 is 17 plus 2 times uh, we substitute 2 in for x, we get square root of 4 plus 16, or square root of 20. And we add 4 times f of 3, which will be square root of 9 plus 16, so square root of 25, which is just 5. And square root of 16 plus 16, which is square root of 32. Alright, now if you uh, plug this into your calculator and come up with a, um, you get, the fi get a final answer of about 18.3645. That's using Simpson's method. So, Simpson's method gives 18.3645. So next, let's use the trapezoidal. Now, trapezoidal um, method is going to be is similar to the Simpsons method, but the formula is slightly different. Uh, it ends up being one half uh, times f of zero. So so far, nothing has changed except for the one half, and we start multiplying. Um, f evaluated at each of the sample points times 2. So we get 2 times f of 1 plus 2 times uh, f of 2 plus 2 times f of 3 plus uh, 2 times, or just f of 4. So this is, if we substitute 0, we end up with uh, 4 plus uh, 2 times the square root of 17 plus 2 times uh, square root of 20 plus 2 times, uh, see this is square root of 25 or 5, plus uh, square root of uh, 32. And if we calculate this, we um, see that trapezoidal method gives us an answer of uh, 18.3647. Or excuse me, no, um, apologize. It should be 
Right, so now that we have our two approximations, let's calculate the exact value and see how close our approximations actually were. So now to compute the exact value of the integral, uh, the easiest way is to use hyperbolic trig substitution. So let's let uh, x equal 4 sinh theta. Right. Well then, um, then of course dx d theta is equal to 4 um, cosh of theta. Uh, so dx is just equal to uh, 4 cosh theta d theta. And the integral is equal to um, the integral of square root of, well, x squared. So this is 16 uh, sinh squared of theta uh, plus 16 uh, dx, which is equal to 4 hyperbolic cosine of theta, d theta. And of course we would like to figure out the limits as uh, x is, as x tends towards zero. So x equals zero. That implies that um, theta is equal to, well, let's see, this means that zero equals um, four cinch Theta, which means that um, zero is equal to sinh of theta. So we just apply inverse sinh of theta to both sides. We get theta equals zero. So our lower limit of integration is zero. And to find the upper limit of integration, we should do the same thing. Uh, just setting x equal to four. So if x equals four. Uh, then we'll have um, 4 equals 4 sinh of theta. And theta will be equal to inverse sinh of 1 after we divide both sides by 4. And this is approximately um, 0 0.881394. Uh, so. All right, well, we can factor out um, 16 out of, the, um, out of the expression inside the radical and um, use the fact that we can um, split up the product, of, that the product of, square root of the product is the product of the square root. So this just gives us a 4. And we end up with times the square root of sinh squared of theta plus 1, which using the, um, the hyperbolic identity, we can. Uh, we know that that's just equal to uh, cosh squared of theta. And of course, we have to multiply by 4 cosh of theta d theta. All right, so we can simplify this a little bit. We have four, two 4s. Four, so we can pull those out. That's uh, 16. And we have the integral from 0 to this inverse sinh of 1, which is 0.8813. And we have the square root of cosh squared, so that's just cosh. And we have a cosh here, so that's uh, cosh squared of theta d theta. Now, we could either use integration by parts, or we could just remember a formula that we derived a little bit earlier. Which says that um, says that the integral of or that an antiderivative for cosh squared of theta is just one half uh, times theta plus sinh of theta cosh of theta. And of course, we'll want to evaluate that from zero to zero point eight eight one three. And so here we're just continuing, uh, continuing the bottom line. And if you work this out, um, 
This ends up being about 18.3647. So at this point, it's kind of interesting to look at the um, error in the two approximations. Uh, we see that if we look at, um, say, the trapezoidal rule, we have an error of about 0.15 or so, um, but which that sounds pretty good. I mean, 0.15, that's pretty small. But then we look at the error in Simpson's rule, and we see that um, the error is actually just equal to, well, 0 0.0. The two agree all the way until the fourth decimal place. So it's error is 0 0.0002. So it gives you an idea of just how much more accurate Simpson's rule is when you're approximating a definite integral.